Okay, welcome. Ivanos is a native ServiceNow application, as some of you may know already. We automate IT operations by unifying both monitoring and event management with ITSM data. Today's conversation is going to be very interactive with our guests from 20th Century Fox. We'll focus on the ways in which they're using event correlation to eliminate alert fatigue. We're going to hear about their ability to merge multiple events into single enriched tickets and how that quickly generates resource savings for them. Specifically, they saved more than 170 hours per month within the first 59 days of GoLive. The agenda for today is really mostly technical. We're not going to do too much marketing or sales or market texture kind of stuff. We do have a mixed audience here. There are some Evanios customers who want to know more about correlation. There are a lot of companies that are taking a look at us for maybe the first time. So we're going to spend just a few minutes, probably three to five in the beginning, introducing our co-presenters and also offering a brief overview of the entire solution. The takeaways today should be a good understanding of correlation techniques and applications. Um, of course, if you want deeper explanations that we don't get to in Q&A, either on correlation capability or any of the adjacent things that we can do with part of the parts of the solution, you're certainly encouraged to contact us for individual product demonstrations. And today's panelists include Nikhil and Jason from Fox and Mark from Avanyo. So Nikhil, I'd love for you to introduce yourself actually and explain a little bit about who you are within Fox and why Fox chose Avanyo. Uh, thanks, Guy. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. Um, this is Nikhil Chorli. I'm the, the monitoring analytics architect at Fox. Uh, primarily responsible for the, the monitoring all our infrastructure applications, tier one, tier two applications, um, setting up custom monitors, as well as um, sending and making sure all these alerts that we generate are properly handled within our command center as well as our operations teams. Uh, I've been with Fox for about uh, four years now. Thank you, Nikhil. And Jason, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Hi, everyone. I'm Jason and I'm working as a senior system engineer for the Fox for the past two years. Uh, I'm part of enterprise monitoring team at uh, Fox. In my current role, I work with various monitoring tools like SCOM, SolarWinds, etc. And uh, I'm primarily also working on IT, uh, ServiceNow IT operations module, uh, primarily into discovery and uh, partly into incident management. Uh, my daily duties involve making sure that the monitoring systems are sending the alert correctly into our ITSM tool, that is ServiceNow, and also getting uh, pro, like collective feedbacks and proactively uh, making sure that all the monitoring requirements are in place. Uh, before an application goes live. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. And finally, Mark, if you would introduce yourself, your role at Avanios and your role specifically in working with our colleagues from 20th Century Fox, that would be great. And then right after that, you can take us into some of the technical overview. Great. Well, thank you, Kai. Uh, so my name is Mark Jajur, and I'm one of the senior architects here at uh, Ivanios. I am particularly excited to be part of that webinar because I've been involved with Fox from the very beginning. So I am very aware of the um, of, of Fox requirements as well as the implementation and all of the results. So I'm, I'm very excited to share that with, uh, with everyone. These are all the customers or a subset of the customers that are using our solution. And I will, what I want to highlight is that it's a very, very diverse list and it also covers um, all types of vertical. So let's start by talking about the problems and then why customers contact Ivanios at the beginning. So I, I, I want to start with one of the codes that one of our customer gave me when they were evaluating the Ivanios solution. And what they said is we have, we tend to have a lot of notification and not enough valid monitoring. And this seemed to be the case across the board. It is very common for customers to be drowning in alert noise to have uh, all type of different monitoring tools that don't communicate with each other and also don't communicate with ServiceNow. So what we provide is a solution that will allow you to have a unified platform where everything is connected into a single pane of glass that will allow the engineers, the operation team um, to prioritize events and then to automate as many processes as possible. The result of what we provide is less downtime, less time troubleshooting, and obviously an increase in operational efficiency. 
So we can summarize our solution in three main categories. So the first category is used to uh, what we call it align. So we will centralize all of your monitoring into a single pane of glass that is ServiceNow. So for all the people that don't know much about Ivanios, we are a native ServiceNow application. Uh, we run side by side with all of your other ITSM module. We will integrate all of your monitoring into a single pane of glass. And then once we have it all integrated, we will make sense out of all of the events that we're getting. At Fox, for example, we have, we have SCOM, we have SolarWind, we have seven other integration. We receive all, all these events, we filter out the noise, uh, it goes through our correlation and deduplication logic. We will provide you with event hierarchy and obviously automatic incident creation and all of it that, uh, that, that comes with it. The last category is the analysis and the prediction. So here is where we leverage our algorithm and our machine learning to automatically score your events, to spot leading indicators, as well as providing you um, root cause analysis. So I'm gonna spend one more slide to talk about the architecture, and then we're gonna go into how uh, Fox is using Ivanios from a correlation perspective. So from a high level perspective here, the, your left side is all of your IT environment. So the IT environment could be on premise and it's moving more and more toward the cloud. We have a, a consolidation point that, we, that is installed on premise that will be used to either receive the events or pull events from all of your monitoring tools, all of the events and the metrics. This will include the initial filtering, normalization of the event, and then finally send it into ServiceNow. So this portion over here is all ServiceNow, where the events will be received by our application. We will go through our deduplication and correlation, enrich the event with CMDB data, provide you with a very rich visualization and analytic engine, obviously creating, an, creating incident or update existing incident and trigger remediation that will go back to your environment and then fix any issue that occurred. So before I pass it to Nikhil to talk about the specific use cases and the implementation, so do we have any questions on the technical side? We actually have gotten some questions already. Um, the, they seem to be related mostly around the protocols that are supported for direct monitoring. So if you could talk to that, uh, that would be great. Sure, so from a protocol perspective, I'll split it in two. One is from an event management, we, um, we would use the, uh, the command line, TCP, UDP, a pull mechanism, which include the REST or PowerShell or any type of database communication. From on the monitoring side, we leverage all of the industry's protocol, including WMI, Perfmon, PowerShell, SSH, WebURL, you know, REST, it's a very vast inventory. Thank you. All right, great. So, Nikhil, I would like to pass it to you to introduce Fox. Sure. Thanks, Mark. Uh, appreciate it. So, <clears throat> hi, everyone. Uh, so, we are 20th Century Fox. Uh, we were one of the largest uh, media production companies in the world. Uh, you must have seen some of our, uh, our really good movies that have come out. We have about 165 plus offices in 100 plus markets are spread across 44 countries. We also operate in about 95, 95 cities where we have branch locations. For us, the biggest hurdle to get into alert correlation was the diversity of our environment. We have a worldwide distributed in network, a really, really complex infrastructure footprint. I mean, we have servers in location, branch locations. We have, we have four data centers where we have servers worldwide, as well as a lot of monitoring tools not every uh, every region is able to be monitored uh, you know we can monitor with the same tools we do have a mix of a lot of tools and for us it was really important uh, to have a centralized place where we could see all this and and a centralized place where our level one support can go in and see what to prioritize what not to prioritize also there is a big push at fox for us to move everything to the cloud so very soon we will be integrating a lot of uh, cloud monitoring tools uh, for Azure and AWS. Uh, and you know that's why this was really a perfect time for us to think about alert correlation. So here's a quick monitoring landscape of uh, what's uh, happening at Fox. We have about 12 different um, ways of getting in alerts currently. Before one years, we use System Center Orchestrator and we wrote our own workflows to do like integrations with all these tools. 
this is just a subset of the tools uh, some of the known tools that people know and there are a lot of other tools in the in the system which probably no one has heard about so uh, most the most important was uh, scom solarwinds uh, neural explunk uh, these are the primary tools that we use and uh, vmware is again our uh, vm farm monitoring we do have a lot of hardware alerts that come in specifically for storage devices like uh, from net apps emcs there are a lot of alerts that come from our, our backup systems like data protector and vmware backup and recovery and the worst nightmare of everyone is an email alert that that fires from a system which does not support any kind of integration so we do have those kind of systems in the mix in the mix here and uh, it's always a challenge to, to parse these emails properly and create alerts and you know send them to the right people those are some of our uh, key tools that we use here obviously we use system center orchestrator to process all of this the the biggest nightmare we always had was uh, orchestrator not being ha and orchestrator not uh, and it was completely home grown so there were only two people here who know how to debug all of this so we really wanted to get onto something that is more enterprise grade and you know which has much much better um, ha and much better reliability so obviously our itsm is service now uh, there are some groups that live in jira and tfs uh, but they have also adopted service now primarily because it's in the cloud for us and it's very very simple to use so from our perspective most important was to have all of this integrated within our itsm tools um, so this is the biggest problem that every everyone uh, faces in the monitoring world it's you don't have you have like 500 different tools and every tool has their own console but you don't have one single place where you can actually see everything there are some tools out there uh, there are a lot of other companies who have tried to do it uh, we did pocs with them uh, but you know we we did we still had issues uh, there is also too much noise because there is no cross tool correlation you cannot say hey solar winds alerted on network device at the same time scom alerted on 50 servers was there a correlation to that? I had no idea because network the network team is looking at solar winds, the server team is looking at SCOM, and they don't they don't know who's who's working on what, what is the root cause. So there was so much noise in the system that um, you know we literally were at at a point where we were rejecting some of the monitoring because it was too noisy. We had a lot of alert floods. As I mentioned, we about six hundred and sixty five plus branch locations and four data centers so anything goes wrong on the network side you know everything behind that one particular switch or one one particular router will just start alerting and there will be alert floods and you know 50 different teams will get alerted application teams the infrastructure teams network teams they get alerted they get called and then it is very difficult to understand exactly what happened obviously we did have a very limited scope of alert suppression with orchestrator Primarily, the alert suppression was around like change management. So, if there are, if the network team is doing a, a switch replace and you know they have put a change, there was very it was kind of impossible for us to stop those alerts rather than just putting them in maintenance selectively, and it was a nightmare. So, we wanted something that was really really automated that could uh, you know take care of hey there is a there is a change for this CI or this alert or this uh, entity, and you know I just want to suppress it automatically. So you don't have to essentially touch the monitoring tools and remember to put something in maintenance and pull it back out of maintenance. So from our perspective, since our monitoring is so decent, decentralized, there are a lot of uh, hands uh, in the cookie jar. So we wanted to make sure that the monitoring piece works as it is. There is no touching, no extra configuration on the monitoring tool side. Everything we manage from an escalation perspective internally. Also, there was a big advantage to that as we could test our monitoring when people literally got down servers. So it was pretty easy. Obviously, all these four major points led to a lot of chaos in our knock. Like they were literally pulling off their hair, hair, like, you know, they're like, what what can we do to to help them make sense of all this alert noise? So before Ivan used the our knock, uh, we we have we had scoped our knock to only receive like high priority and critical alerts and they were receiving about 5,000 alerts a week. And all of them, so imagine like, you know, you have people in the knock, they're calling 5,000 people or 5,000 teams and escalating these alerts and creating those outage notifications. So the mandate was that we want to take these 5,000 and convert it to under 50. 
when we did an analysis on what kind of alerts we were getting, there was a lot of correlation possibilities. There were some some ways for us to make sure that, hey, uh, you know, this is actionable, this is not actionable. But since we didn't have one single pain, we couldn't make those decisions confidently. So then comes in Ivanios. Along with Ivanios, we did POCs with a few other companies, a few other products. There are certain reasons why we chose Ivanios. The first reason being it is built on service now. So it works directly with our ITSM, change management, all our incident management, as well as our maintenance systems, patching and all that. So it was kind of a very good prospect. So we did look at that was not probably the whole decision maker for us. Uh, the deal breaker was all the integrations, the bi-directional integrations that they have. Many other tools out there receive alerts and it's not bi-directional. So the biggest problem that I faced always was, uh, you know, with some of these tools is if, say, if New Relic uh, wants to throw an alert, you have to actually configure a way to send that alert. Every alert that you configure in New Relic, you'll have to send it to that specific system. So it's kind of a monitoring overhead and prone to mistakes, obviously. It's very difficult to automate all that stuff where, hey, every alert has to go to this system. So it's not that easy in, in, some, in some tools. In some tools, you can set up and you can do it. But again, you know, bi-directional was key for us. And with Ivanios, they were very open. They did a lot of customization to their uh, integrations too for us so that they could support our vision of bi-directional and, you know, make sure that it's seamless. So that's why it was kind of a really big thing for us to get bi-directional connectivity between all our monitoring tools. Obviously, since it's on service now, it was very, very easy for us to understand. Like Jason already mentioned, he and me and I, we both work uh, day in, day out with ServiceNow developers. And so as we do a lot of ServiceNow development, we have some of our custom apps also built in ServiceNow, which was one of our evaluation criteria that, hey, we have these custom tables in ServiceNow where we are tracking some really important business information. And we would like that information to be correlated with our alerts and, you know, we could drive some business value out of it, which was kind of key. So, and since uh, Ivanius is on the platform, it, it had access to all those tables. So it was very easy for us to integrate those apps. It was kind of seamless. We, I, it's like, you know, um, yesterday I went home and today morning I come back and it's already integrated. So it was that easy. Obviously, uh, Ivanius as a tool, it's very easy to understand. You know, it's just logical grouping of everything. Most of the stuff is kind of automated. So all you have to touch is just really, really basic scenarios. One other thing uh, was the obviously they have a very, very rock solid correlation, deduplication and suppression logic, especially the correlation logic that I would like to speak about is, uh, you know, they can literally, you can do anything under the sun that you can think of with this correlation logic. We were able to correlate alerts from areas where we never even thought we, we, we would be able to. We were able to bring up correlation scenarios. We have close to like 35 correlation scenarios that we have implemented. And it just comes up naturally now. Now, now the thing is, all we do is we look at, hey, why didn't this, this get correlated? And now there is always an answer. Yeah, this is how you do it. And it's pretty straightforward in one year. It's very, very easy to put in. Just put in one rule and you're done. So that's why, I mean, we love the platform. Obviously, on the business side, we definitely had a very fast return on investment. Um, as Kai already mentioned, we dropped about 170 hours a week for our uh, command center straight as soon as we implemented this. There were like 59% consolidation of our alerts. It was very simple and fast implementation. The whole implementation was done in just two days. And we still continue to do our integration. So we have an engagement going on with Ivanios that lasted for about four weeks to do all the integrations. But setting up all the correlation and setting up the product, it was hardly like a one day or two day thing. And obviously, you know, I'm a big fan. I mean, of, of Mark, uh, he's been an excellent partner for us to work with, uh, always available uh, you know, whenever, whenever we need it. It was like uh, it was one of the best partnerships we ever had. Thanks, Nigel. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to go in the weeds a little bit and then talk about the technical implementation, about the architecture at Fox and then how it was done. So we have seven to eight integration that are implemented. Uh, in some cases, it's a bi-directional. Whenever it's possible, we did bi-directional. Whenever there's a limitation from the tool itself, we did it as a unidirectional. So all of the connection with the exception of email, we're go, we'll go through the Ivanius agents. The Ivanius agent will do the initial filtering and then send it into ServiceNow where it would be correlated and then act upon. 
Jason, can you expand a bit on your current Ivanios architecture? Okay, uh, so Mark, uh, so we had this seven integration all done in within a time span of like two to three weeks. So the rule engine is a uh, app that was built on service now platform by uh, it was an in-house app. So we integrated it with, with Ivanios and all the integration like uh, the Orc the SCOM, the SolarWinds, VMware. Uh, most of them are bi-directional except for the SNMP traps which we are getting from HP Data Protect. Uh, th those are unidirectional because of the limitation of the tool. Th those only send SNMP trap. Splunk again is a push from the Splunk app. Uh, they have created a separate app for us. And uh, best thing about this integration is that it was a HA integration. So we had like two agents uh, hosted in our data centers, uh, both in different data centers. So if one of the agent is down, the working of the another agent will start, like it will flip on to the other agents. So the integration has been always HA. It has rock solid for us so far. And uh, means bi-directional help us in many ways so that if an alert is uh, closed in SCOM, it automatically gets closed in uh, the Ivanius tool and then in the incident also gets closed. So similarly, that was the main advantage of all this integration. Yes. Right, thank you. Thanks, Jason. So let's talk about the other results, which is the event suppression. So we were looking at some reports and I think 20% of events were being suppressed, which is a huge number as far as incident reductions. So there's nothing more annoying than sending a notification and then waking up someone at 3 a.m. Uh, only to find out that there's an active change record on, on that specific CI or that there is a CI maintenance that is scheduled. So this one, one of the big low hanging fruit, because that, that came out of the box with, with Ivanios. And what I would like is, Jason, can you talk a bit as far as what method do the group at Fox use in order to deal with maintenance? I mean, did they do everything through change management or can you, can you expand a bit on that? So uh, we had this various implementation of uh, like uh, like event suppression using Ivanius. The previous uh, previously we used to like depend on change management and all those uh, ad hoc maintenance. But after Ivanius was in place, Ivanius integrated with our change management tool. So whenever there is a change for us, yeah, and if it is comprehensive, the alert is to get suppressed. And uh, similarly for ad hoc maintenance, we had like a, a means a custom app in our side so that uh, RBCI does have a maintenance window. Uh, if you want to uh, do a maintenance, then use that maintenance window and Ivanus integrated uh, very well with that. So whenever there is an uh, uh, system shutdown or any uh, maintenance is going on, it will not uh, affect and the event will be in the blackout. So again, for schedule maintenance, like patching and all those things, we had this in place. Uh, Ivanus just integrated it uh, with it very well. So th there was uh, one more thing that, that was added with Ivanus was we could uh, use Ivanus maintenance schedule. So with that, uh, like we suppressed uh, during non-business hours all the non-production alerts so that uh, all the events which are shown in the CI, it's a non-production, it will not alert. It will reset after the cycle, like in the morning 6 o'clock. And if the, because of the bi-directional connectivity, it will again send the alerts back into service now during business hours. So that was the best thing because uh, in the previous tool, we couldn't do all this uh, like, things and again for the patch management whenever there is a, means we have uh, all CIs have their uh, windows defined like uh, during this time window the patch will be deployed so during that time uh, Ivanist would send the events into blackout and after that uh, after the patch window if the alerts are not closed uh, if the alerts are not closed for some reason Ivanist will make sure it resets the monitor and it will fire the alerts again so the, that's how we started really, uh, getting immediate benefits from event suppression from Ivanus. All right, great, great. Thanks, Jason. So let's talk about the result number three as far as the correlation. So um, <clears throat> we all know what correlation is. It's basically receiving multiple events from either the single tool or multiple tools. The event can be similar or they can be related through some sort of a means. It could be the relationship can be based on the CI name, or it could be based on the location, or it could be based on a CMDB relationship. So it's a very, very vast um, spectrum as to how events get, uh, get correlated together. So from a fun, I'm going to focus on Fox and talk about what were the high level requirements when we were implementing the correlation over there. 
so one is the incident description need to always indicate what failed and if we have more than one CI or more than one more type of events to include that in the short description. So the description should always be, I don't want to be correlating 20 events and then have the engineer have to go deep into the work notes to know that this was, this is a correlated incident. So it has to be very clear on the short description that this is a correlated and then how many CIs are being impacted. Number two is the priority of the incident is always driven by the worst offender event. And it, it will always be adjusted once we have more than 10 affected CIs. So the priority is dynamic as well. I could potentially create an incident with a P4, but then if I get something that is higher, then the, the priority gets dynamically updated. Also, it was not an all or nothing requirement. So some specific events at Fox are excluded from the correlation. So Ivanios provided the flexibility to be as generic as we need to or as specific as we need to. Number four or five, I'm not, I'm not sure where I am on that list, but from an incident resolution, since we automatically resolve incidents, we only resolve them when all the correlated events are resolved. And this is a common request that we get from our customers. If I have 20 events combined into one incident, the auto resolution only happens when the very last one closes. Um, and finally, the correlation is often based on time as well as the number of occurrence. So as an example, for backups, we will only generate an incident if the same job fails three times in 12 hours coming from the same backup server. So there's always a combination between time and the number of occurrences in order to, to mix things together. So what I want to do next is talk about some specific use cases that were done at Fox. So the first use case is a typical one. So this use case is if a network component goes down, how can we not be flooded with ticket and notification? So we tend to monitor critical application and devices from multiple monitoring source. If I have my router in a specific branch goes down and I'm gonna receive 100 events telling me that my servers behind that router is down, all of these things need to be correlated and combined into one incident. So here I wanna pass it back again to Jason. And, and Jason, can you share first with how this scenario was handled prior to Ivanios and then how is it handled now and if you can also explain a little bit as far as the, the branches. So if we do correlation differently, if it's a branch or if it's a data center. Okay, sure, sure, Mark. Uh, yeah, so in this uh, scenario, like uh, Nikhil mentioned earlier that we have like uh, 150 plus branches. So what is to happen like uh, on ongoing basis, uh, the, the, there is to be some problem that the site location, the network devices were down or something. Then we used to get credit from uh, like a lot of alerts from that site. And uh, means the knock, uh, was finding it hard to determine like who to call during such events. So what we did was, uh, we uh, means uh, on all the CI, the location was common, you know, and these are the brand sites. So we wanted a way to correlate all the events in a particular time stamp, like a 30 minutes time window. If all the alerts are the same and belonging to the same location, we wanted to correlate uh, it because that is the most of the use case. Like uh, in a month, I would guess at least at the minimum five brand sites will go down. But uh, it could be more than that. I'm just giving uh, arbitrary example. So, so, so in this scenario, if you can, uh, from, from the screenshot, you can see that uh, there is only one incident for all of these uh, uh, alerts from SolarWinds and also from SCOM. So basically, uh, all of these CIs are in a common location. And uh, those locations are also known as branch uh, for, for us. And uh, we have correlated all based on the 30 minutes time window into one incident. So. Tier one, whenever they get an incident, they will get only one incident and they will have to look to the events. So basically, if the brand side comes up like in another 15, 30 minutes by help of the network team, then uh, all the incidents, all the events will go close and the incident will get close, that, uh, thereby reducing the uh, efforts on the tier one side. So in this example, uh, as you can see, uh, we have the short description and multiple CIs. So whenever it gets the ticket, they, they have to make sure that all the CIs uh, and the associated events are closed before closure of the ticket or uh, the auto closure also kicks up once all the events are closed. So that, that was the most uh, heavily used case in Fox because we have 165 site and mostly branch location. For data centers, we cannot do this because data centers, um, like some of this uh, uh, hardware alert comes in and we cannot correlate two, three, but for site, we could uh, 
do this because in a 30 minute time frame but for data centers in different location we handle in a different logic so uh, that's about it for uh, this type of correlation this is a highly used in our, our case so let's go to to the use case number 2 so if i come back to the the, the call that we got from uh, from one of our customer we tend to do too much notification too much incident creation and not enough valid monitoring so for the same for the same issue for the same application we will generate all type of notifications so an example we can have a port down if an application goes down we'll get it we're going to get a port down alert we're going to get a url down we're going to get a process down an application down so for one failure we will receive multiple events coming from different tools and the reason is because these are critical applications so all of these are important but it's not really necessary to treat them differently because they are all part of the same failure. So this is another use case that is also heavily used at Fox. And, and Jason, can you share a bit the, the benefit of this correlation logic and then how, how it's being used? Yeah, so in this case, uh, what we have done is like uh, uh, for all our apps, okay, supposingly a URL is down or a TCP port is down. So we have to monitor it on an individual basis. Like New Relic is monitoring the app and uh, SCOM is monitoring the TCP port and something like that, like other tools. So what we did was in that case, if it is time bucketed, okay, if it is time bucketed within uh, uh, 15 to 20 minutes, if all of these uh, come together, then we club it into one ticket so that uh, whoever is the incident owner uh, has to make sure all the incidents are closed and not just creating four or five tickets. Because earlier we used to find it difficult because because these are from different tools like New Relic and SCOM and SolarWind in some case. So in this case, what we did was we uh, correlated all the three incidents into one, uh, and just the one incident was worked by the engineering or the operations team. And uh, because the short description had multiple events, that means it was from it was not the same CI, but it was multiple events from different sources. So we had to make sure that uh, all the events are closed before closing the incident. And and in some cases, if you close the incident, okay, uh, somebody in the inventory closed the incident, then it will automatically open because in either of this uh, like integration the alert is open it will automatically create that incident again so yeah. this helped us a lot because uh, we, we were seeing this pattern a lot like if a tcp port is down and a web one comes in and we are creating two separate incidents for the same thing and uh, like two um, in some cases two different teams but in most of the cases it is two same teams get involved and uh, this is how we handle it and uh, th this is the like one of the most best correlation we have, to be honest. Jason, thanks. This is Kai. And um, Mark, we have a lot of questions coming in right now. So I think it's probably a good time to pause and, and take one or two of them um, before we move on to the final few slides and then, or the final use case, and then moving on to the final few slides before Q&A. Specifically, one that just came in that's really relative to what you're talking about right now is in terms of defining the app by CMDB, right? So question from Ken was how we're tying together, whether it's URL or port, Etc. So if you could expand on that a little bit, that would be great. Sure. So the, the generic answer is it could be defined in the CMDB or it could be defined in the alert itself. In specifically at Fox, the relationship between a URL down, a TCP port, and an app down is not defined in the CMDB, at least not yet. So the way we link these together is based on matching field within the event itself. So when we get an event, we know that it's the we know which application is being impacted, whether it's coming from uh, URL, TCP, or app down, and we have a time frame. Uh, that's how we do the the correlation. So it could be either way. It could be a CMDB relationship if the CMDB relationship exists, or it could be a matching field. Yeah. So Mark, in most of the cases, it is the configuration item which we use to uh, like all of this uh, will have the same configuration item, and they are time bucketed. So Again, Correct. Really, yes, it's based on the CI in this case. Yes. Hey, hey uh, Kai, this is Nikhil. Um, the quick uh, thing I, I saw, uh, I think uh, people are a little bit uh, uh, wanted to know more about how we, what was the logic implemented. So for, um, for branch locations, uh, you know, all of our configuration items that we have discovered have their own specific uh, branch locations. And uh, with Ivanios, uh, we could, since it has, a has access to our CMDB, as well as it can go any level deeper, even to the locations, uh, we were able to say, okay, now 
all these uh, alerts are coming for these CIs for the same for different for different CIs in the same location, and that's how we club them together. Um, also, we, uh, for uh, for regard for this slide that is that you guys are currently seeing for applications, uh, all of our app level alerts uh, coming from Neuralix, Calm. Uh, there are some of them coming from web monitors. All of them um, basically linked to an app CI, and um, the way uh, the way we have done it is we have a lot of custom management packs in Scom that we have somewhat written to, to automate all our CI extractions. So with the one years, uh, we had the flexibility of extracting a CI from any particular field in the alert that comes in, and based on that CI extracted, we are now able to say, hey, uh, this is for uh, app one or app two, and now correlate everything for that one app, which is one CI. So um, we, were, we were able to say, okay, for one specific CI, if you have 50 alerts in a matter of 30 minutes, then combine all of them together. That was the logic that was used. Okay, all right, good. So let's proceed here. So Nikhil, do you wanna talk about this correlation use case? Uh, sure, so <clears throat> I'm pretty sure uh, all uh, everyone has apps that are on clustered servers or clustered apps which are running on different servers. So this is more around uh, clustered apps uh, that are running on different servers. So the idea is there is an app which has uh, six servers underneath. The servers are not clustered, but the app has processes running on three of them and the other three are passive. So the, the clustering is on the app level. Now, uh, this was a very unique scenario where we had no way for us to link those process alerts that if the process goes down on all the servers then alert right so we did not have that capability when we did our previous integrations so what we did with the one years was uh, since it was so flexible for us to pick and choose we uh, we were able to say hey um, if there is an alert on all these six servers if the process goes down only then alert so the way we implemented that was uh, we will be getting the process alerts for the passive nodes for sure so we don't process those alerts and put them straight into and create incidents. Those alerts are, are kept in a holding bucket. And uh, when uh, once the new alerts come in, come in from the other three servers, that means the app is completely down. That means both your active and passive uh, nodes are down. You actually create one incident which will say the app is down. So that actually helped uh, some of our really tier one applications to scale monitoring uh, across their servers because many times these applications are vendor produced or you know, there is no, con no control on how we want to do the clustering. So this was like a very, very unique uh, use case. The other two use cases that you saw were very generic. This is a very unique one. I mean, I've worked with different companies, but I have very, very rarely seen this kind of a use case. And to be able to implement that so easily, I mean, we implemented this, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in about a day and a half, including all the code and everything. So it was very, very easy for us to integrate this. The app teams love it. Um, now they don't, they are not like, hey, um, you know, they're not getting woken up in the middle of the night for passive nodes going down. So this was kind of very, very important for us to get done. And we're pretty happy we were able to do it so easily with the one years. Those are the three big use cases at Fox. There are another 30, 32 use cases that we haven't covered. We probably try to cover it will be a one day session. But some gains that we that we saw with Ivanios was significant noise reduction. So I'd, as Mark had mentioned, just the dedupe logic and the suppression on change management event and ad hoc maintenance, that reduced our incident count by about 28%. Then there was a lot of correlation which reduced the reduced it further by another 31 percent so the we ended up reducing our count from 5,000 incidents a week to the command center to under 100 and something incidents to the command center now our target is to get it still low and only send it to the command center only and only if it is like really really required so Ivanis is kind of giving us that flexibility to be able to route to the command center only the things that really matter. We can do prioritization. We, we are also overriding priorities in many cases. We are overriding CIs in many cases because there is some tribal knowledge. And one thing with Ivanis that, that was really, really impressive was for us to be able to put our tribal knowledge that, that we have acquired over the last uh, maybe four or five years 
just working in this space, like the entertainment space is not an easy space to work with because there's a lot of um, infrastructure and a lot of applications which are very, very weird. Um, you know, rendering applications, transcoding applications, those applications are, are very, very point solutions and it's very difficult to set up monitoring for those. And uh, that is where Ivanius helped us. Um, obviously, there was a big, a big reduction in find and fix time because now the command center was not getting flooded with 5,000 alerts, rather they were just getting, looking at few few alerts a day, not even 100 alerts a day, they were even less than that a day. They were able to now pinpoint uh, and create really, uh, really good reports saying, hey, this is something that is chronic, this is something that is really a big issue, this is something that maybe uh, we should go back to the engineering teams and tell them, uh, we are getting these alerts on a daily basis or you know, we were able to do the trending and do all that which was not possible with our previous solution so it helped us really find those key issues and you know hammer them out obviously there has been a big 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 uh, cheer in our knock the good part is Ivanius has been so easy for them to from a transition perspective they're also coming up with their own correlation scenarios for us uh, which is pretty fascinating because there are some things that we probably don't see when we are when we are on not on the ground and uh, When they see it they bring it to us and we try to see what the feasibility is and we then implement those There has been a really big uptake in uh, RCAs um, So if there was an outage, you know now that we are able to correlate it We are able to tell pinpointedly what alert was the precedence to a specific outage Previously, we never had that capability, like, uh, you know, because we have distributed teams, we don't have one way to figure out, hey, there was an alert. Yeah, there was an alert in SolarWinds, but there were four alerts in, in SCOM. Now, which of these is a precursor to everything? Now, there was no way to figure it out, but now it is so easy that it's, it's a matter of just a few clicks and we can find out what the issue is. Uh, one other thing, uh, you know, that I um, that we gained uh, with, uh, with Ivanius was more around um, reporting. So we were able to report to higher management much faster than say uh, the ROI on the product. Since we were able to show within 60 days, we were, we were able to cut down the effort by 59%, which was a big gain from uh, from higher management's perspective. They were very happy. So that kind of speaks to the, the success of the project. Also, there was some changes that were really welcome with Ivanios. Uh, previously, our teams were you know chasing incidents individually. Now, now, since the incidents are correlated and time bucketed and also the alerts are in one incident, the teams have found it much more useful that they can resolve five alerts by just working on one incident, which is kind of huge because they are very, very happy that they don't have to fix the same issue over and over again. Or even if they fix the issue, they don't have to close like 50 incidents for that one issue. So they are they are pretty happy the uh, you know the way things have rolled out. Uh, it was kind of we we did this. Um, whole exercise uh, with a leap of faith and um, I'm, and Mark was uh, there throughout the whole journey and we were pretty happy that at the end of the journey we we were our faith came true so <laughs> that's what I would just put it that way so lessons learned um, the first lesson and the biggest lesson that we learned was drowning and alerts is not an option there is always a way out and I think the fastest way out is, or the easiest way out is the one that everyone would like to take. And, and for me, it was Ivanius. For us, it was Ivanius primarily. With other tools that we did POCs with, we had a lot of problems, not just the tool, but also getting customer service to work with us, getting the implementation guys to work with us. With Ivanius, it was very, very simple. So that's where uh, one of my key points was to select the right partner. And uh, I'm we are pretty glad that we partnered with Ivanius to do this. It was way it was very very seamless. They were extremely open to all our ideas around monitoring as well as around event aggregation. So they were really really open to build very very customized implementations for integrations, which suited our requirements. And uh, that was like the best part of working with uh, with Ivanius in this relationship. Obviously, the, we were able to do a really good intelligent and contextual alert processing which actually helped us catch a couple of outages before they even happened because we since we knew that there was some tribal knowledge around this we were able to actually uh, you know field some of those alerts some of those incidents before it really transferred into a worldwide outage one thing that we definitely learned is uh, you know we, we should <laughs> you know professional services is required 
at least to get you started. Um, you know, now that we have a really good relationship with Ivanios, we we kind of tend to lean on them to help us uh, do some more really, really weird correlations that people come out with. Now, uh, we have people that are asking us to correlate just two alerts. And I mean, it's it's kind of a very, very <laughs> weird request, but you know, Ivanios helps us uh, implement all that. Uh, one thing I think before I want to uh, before I want to close this is uh, Ivanios um, at Fox we are monitoring some of our uh, really tier one applications which are uh, primarily a digital supply chain which uh, basically supplies content to all the broadcasters and TV uh, TV producers and you know many other uh, uh, companies that uh, resell our products uh, worldwide and. Uh, we are monitoring all these applications with our monitoring tools and with Ivanios since uh, since we are able to now correlate and we're able to now uh, you know find out the root cause much more faster these application teams uh, have been really really happy and uh, you know next time when you go see a fox movie you know maybe at the back of your head maybe you should think that hey there is Ivanios making sure that you got the movie in time so movie on demand uh, you know there'll be there, there is Ivanios behind uh, sending that to you. So next steps for uh, for Fox with Ivanios. So we implemented Ivanios in January and we finished uh, with seven integrations in about four weeks. So it was really fast. Uh, after that, in two months, we saw really good results. So our next uh, targets for uh, FY17, 18 are uh, we have some more uh, integrations that we have to finish, which include uh, OneView, EG some uh, random sporadic email integrations um, and then next two quarters we are going to spend more mostly on integration because since there's a big push to move to the cloud there's a lot of cloud monitoring coming under us um, and we are going to be uh, relying heavily on Ivanios and their development team to help us out with you know getting all those alerts aggregated into Ivanios. The two quarters after that is more around analytics and predictions uh, we are looking to do the event scoring and event prediction logic that uh, Ivanios has it's kind of um, very cool I've seen a demo of it um, you know it is really good to know that hey in 30 minutes from now there's going to be a catastrophic failure of this specific app and I have 30 minutes to fix it so it's it's or maybe more I mean it, it depends but the way uh, the way um, I have seen it uh, in action it is very very cool and uh, you know I think it has it has really good potential at Fox, and we are looking to really partner up with um, uh, with Ivanios to build uh, to implement pretty prediction and scoring, um, as well as uh, dashboards around the, our alerts. All right, that's it. I have some shameless plugging at the end, uh, but uh, you know, can't help it. Thank you, guys. I'm looking forward to the movie, and uh, that was great, Nikhil. Thank you very much, and uh, Jason and Mark as well. We have a ton of questions. I know we're not going to have time before the top of the hour to get through all of them, so I'm just going to kind of throw out a couple of themes here and see if we can get uh, quick replies. Mark, I'll address the first one to you. Jess asked about bi-directional integrations. If you can expand on that a little bit um, from an architecture perspective and explain what actually is sent to the monitoring solution for a bi-directional integration. So it's pretty flexible. By the, the, the default is we will send the incident back to a SCOM or SolarWinds. And then if the incident is resolved, we will close the alert in the monitoring tools. However, that, the, this is just the default behavior. We can very easily add to it. And for example, if you want to send the, the support group, if you want to send the, uh, uh, the incident priority, uh, in some cases, the work notes is being sent. So that, I mean, any information that is available in service now can be sent back in the bi-directional. All right, fantastic. The next questions are related, actually, actually two-part question from the same participant, Ashish. Um, the first is, if a change request is created in ServiceNow for a UPS, as an example, will the correlation logic suppress alerts for all of the devices that are connected to the UPS? Uh, it's up to you, how do you wanna do it? Uh, you can either do it, it has to be an exact match in the change request, or you can say, I want to go an exact, you know, exact match plus one level. So if I have all of the uh, CIs are connected to UPS, if UPS goes into maintenance, then I want to, all of the ones that are connected through one level to UPS can go, can be suppressed. So it could be, it could be one or the other, either, either an exact match or a relationship. 
Thank you. We had actually several along the theme of this. So the next question I've kind of paraphrased a little bit, but it's really how does Avanios use relationships between CIs for correlation purposes? The relationship will be in the CMDB. And then the way you will configure the correlation is you can specify that if I have two events that are related through the CMDB, and uh, there's a lot of filtering that you can do over there. So for example, uh, it has to be an ESX uh, CI, and it has to be only three um, hops away. Then, then, I, then you can correlate it. Or you can say if I have two events that, that have any type of relationship, two CIs that have any type of relationship in the CMDB, then the event should be correlated. So it's up to you to configure it the way you want. Thanks, Mark. This is a, uh, probably addressed to Nikhil and Jason. Ken was asking if they're using an auto discovery tool to populate the CMDB. We are using ServiceNow Discovery, which does our CMDB population as well as um, some, as well as most of the relationships. Uh, Jason is, uh, is is my guy for discovery. Is our discovery guru. Yeah, so so for all the brand sites, we use uh, like the ServiceNow Discovery and map the location to the uh, that uh, CI, so that we are, we are sure that this CI belongs to this branch and all those kind of stuff. And uh, from that, we derive a relationship to the site, and that's how we correlate them thereafter. So guys, I know we're at the top of the hour. And again, I want to both thank everybody for participating. Uh, Nikhil and Jason, fantastic job. Obviously, we love working with you guys and, and it's a treasure trove of data for us to take advantage of too. So thank you for sharing best practices and learning. The second, of course, is we wanna make sure that everybody goes out to see Planet of the Apes, which I think is the third part of this amazing trilogy. So <laughs> just wanna reinforce the shameless plug there, okay? So thank you everybody. Thank you. <laughs> it's been a great session.